Hey guys, what's up? Evil Zombie here. So today I'm going to be talking, revisiting my portable Dungeon Master kit. Uh, what it entails, what's inside it, what other things I might bring with me if I'm going somewhere else to play D&D. Uh, if I don't want to carry a bunch of books. So first, let's just talk about the case. The case itself is just the camera case, or no, this is the microphone case. Um, this was for a set of lavalier microphones, which I leave on my desk because I use them for virtual reality. So the case itself I don't need for anything other than just D&D. But the case is nice because it has a big empty spot and it has a spot for cables that normally go in there, but I use it for papers. And it has just enough space for all of my purposes. And I want to show you any changes that I've made to my portable D&D setup, any changes that I've done throughout the year, just kind of tweaks here and there. Uh, there's not much that's changed, but there's a couple things that I've kind of tweaked here and there. So, let's just jump into it and have some fun. So, of course, you can see I have four sets of dice. I have their dice bags. You need dice. You need dice for D&D. These are just your standard polyhedra dice set. And they're pretty good dice. These are just nice little dice. They're all pretty well balanced. These are all um, the resin dice. None of them are anything special other than them just being resin dice. And I like them. They roll well. They're all pretty accurate. I had a player, I had two players get like three nat 20s, four nat 20s during one game one time. And yeah, it worked well. This, they're pretty good dice. This, I'll get to in a minute. These are like my paper clips and these are clips that go onto my DM screen. So that we'll get to in a minute. <clears throat> this, this is important. These are my map tiles. Oh, a bunch of these everywhere. I have them down below my D&D table here. But these are nice because I can just slide that off of there and then I have all these I made these out of laminate floor tiles I just cut them I made a grid on them with a permanent marker and they already have adhesive on the back so I just put like a kitchen counter um, drying mat basically like one of those rubber ones that you can get at like Home Depot for like two dollars I got a bunch of it and then I just coated like a whole bunch of these things with it and yeah these just make great tiles I have some that look like wood and everything too. Um, then this actually was from my marble walls. This is a wallet box that I got at like Burlington or Five Below or something. Uh, my wallet came in here, but it's also a nice kind of felt material on a cheap plastic thing. So it makes for a great dice tray. So it actually works pretty well for that. I like it. It works as a very nice dice tray. I have no issues with it, you know? It's, it's been a great little dice tray, I've been happy with that. It fits perfectly, it's the perfect size for my tiles to fit in. That's why I love it. I can have four tiles and they fit right to the top of it, and then I can close this, no problem. Oh, and I can perfectly wrap this around all those tiles as well, so that just kind of was a happy accident. That was from Cables. This is a crap ton of minis. There's a lot of minis. I have a lot of zombies from a different game. <laughs> okay, so these are all from a different game. This was from the Bag O' Babes that come from, from the Zombies board game. Uh, the Bag O' Babes, here I'll just hold it up a little bit. I don't know if it's going to adjust. There you go. It's like a little chick zombie. It's awesome. And I have, I got a bag of like 150 of these things a long time ago, so now I just have... A ton of them and I like to use them for minis because I can be like okay a whole bunch of goblins and then I put them in there or a whole bunch of zombies or a whole bunch of imps or things like that you know or I can just use them as map markers or whatever <laughs> I have a ton of these suckers so those are handy these are like these little Jada die cast figures these are little miniatures they're D&D &D size of course but it's only like $5 for a box of four of these, or it was like 20 bucks for a gigantic box. And they come with all different kinds. I got like a beholder, I got a troll, I got a dragon. Uh, I got a bunch of these things. Like basically, uh, all these are my Jada figures. I got some Minecraft ones for my kids. A bunch of them, I love them. But the cool thing is, I, I just picked a few different ones for my D&D, for my portable kit based on what character sheets I have and what players might choose. Like if they choose um, like a ranger, for example, if they then they can use this one. Or if they use a barbarian or a fighter, they can use this guy or possibly druid, you know. Um, this one more like a paladin or cleric they can use for that. 
Here, I'll go a little closer. So you can see those guys. This one's obviously a rogue. Um, this one, like a, like a sorcerer or wizard. Uh, of course, oop, two more of those figures. Like a dwarf, barbarian, or any other kind of dwarf that you like. And of course we have Bard, because the Bard is awesome. So we got all those. Those are just like some of the basic types of classes. And there's a few different races. Like I got Drow, I got Elves, Humans, uh, Tiefling, um, what's it called? Dwarves. And yeah, no, people can just kind of pick and mix and match the different things. I just keep them in the Dice Envy bags because I have a lot of those. I get a lot of Dice from Dice Envy. And the bags are gigantic, so I can store everything in them. See? And I, <laughs> I have so much room. I love it. I like these bags because they fit pretty much anywhere and they could store a crap ton of things. Okay, moving on. And here is where I keep all my busy work stuff. I have all my pencils. Uh, so I have a pencil for each player, good eraser on them. I'll set that over here. Oh yeah, this can also be a decent dice rolling tray for me, the DM, and I'll pass that one to the player a lot of the times. Because then I have all my notes with me and I have this. Um, the first most important thing in here is probably the DM screen. So I have my DM screen, and I have a bunch of different notes, and that's where this comes in. There. I got these paper clips. I can clip some of the notes together if I want to, or I can just do these little clippy things that I got. These are awesome. So I can just have like, well, I have four different sheets on here. I'll go across it and clip them on there, you know, normally. But just how I do it is like this. And then I just have my little DM screen out here, and I have my notes going across it. So then I have all my little notes, they can't see my stuff, and it's good for camping trips because it takes almost no room. Because it's tiny. It's very tiny. And that just unclips, folds, and then it can fit back in this bag and it's pretty much flat. Uh, this uh, is a, the Tome of Spells. It's a little mini booklet I could print out, fold, and all that stuff. I got this on DM's Guild. Um, I'll look for it and include a link if I can find it again because... This is the most incredibly handy thing ever. Look at this. It's a little tone of spells. You have your character name, the different types of attacks you have. It's like your whole hand, handbook for that. Uh, you have your cantrips and different spell levels and your slots. It's just a nice little booklet where you keep your spell, spell list. And that's all it is. It's a little spell book. It's so handy. And this is also incredibly handy for players on the go when I'm going camping. Um, basically, if they want to have like their their own custom sheet and they don't want to use a pre-generated one this is incredibly handy for on the go because you don't have to have a full paper um it has different kinds of information i got this on dm's guild as well I'll look for it and um, i bought this on there or i think i can't remember if i bought it or if it was free i'll add a link so you can see it i don't have an affiliate thing with them it's just that's what i used and it's incredibly handy i love this it has all the ability checks and all your information, your name, personal stuff is in the back there, your picture for your character. But I love this book. It's so incredibly handy. I got a bunch of these printed out. It's a bit of a pain to print it, fold it, and get it all right. But it was worth it. These are for my beginner players. So these are incredibly handy. I print these out and I hand these around. And it's just like a little uh, sheet that shows dice, what, what they are. So that your players, if they're newbies and they are first time, are can be like, okay, this is what the dice are. And they have that chart in front of them. That has come incredibly handy. And then I printed out some uh, condition cards. I'll add a link for that if I can find it, because these are incredibly handy as well. So like, characters blinded, you hand them the card, and then they can just look and see what it entails. You know, so that's incredibly handy. Uh, note cards and note cards. This one... Oh, just more, more DM notes for me. So this is just more for my reference. Okay, that one's just more for my reference than anything else. Actually, so I don't lose it, I'll probably just stick that one in here with these. But I can just kind of pick later. And I have note cards and note cards because you can never have too many note cards. It's important in D&D. This is more beginner stuff. I like to keep that with me because it's a lot of times first time players, I'll be on the go and I have my set in my backpack. This tells them what they can do, basically, in all of D&D. This is like their action chart and see what they can do. So it kind of gives them an idea of things they can ask for, you know? They'd be like, can I do this? Yes, it's on your sheet, see? Get out my whole, my whole mess of papers here. 
Uh, I got some combat trackers here. It's incredibly handy. So I just write the, it's tiny, I know. I just, I'll use a pencil for it. But I can write the initiative order, like the player names, then all their information over here for that, like their armor class, HP, passive perception, their name, and then all the enemies over here and have all their information. And it's just a nice little thing so I can keep track of things a little easier. Look, I gotta keep that with the new player stuff because that is that same paper. This is for a Christmas encounter I'm doing. Okay, I'll get to these first. These are my enemy cards. These are cool. These are just like for different types of monsters, monster sheets, monster cards. Because, well, it's nice to have different varieties like the zombie. So I have all their information just basically printed out and I can just pick from it. I have different kinds of humans in the back and different kinds of monsters in the front. It tells their CR rating. Uh, if I could find this again, I know I got this on DM's Guild. I'll find it again and I'll give you the link in the description below. But it was incredibly handy. Go support the creator. It's fantastic. Oh yeah, these are just bigger ones for the monster cards. Um, and these are incredibly handy for if I want like a, a lower level boss creature for them to fight, you know? Like if I want them to fight a wraith or if I want them to be stalked by a doppelganger for a while. Then I have all the information for that. So it's still just monster cards, just bigger ones. This same thing, just I had all the different types of vampires included right here. These, oh, there's a bunch of these. These are pre-generated characters. I went and printed out a bunch of these suckers. And I printed them very small, so two per sheet on the paper, and then I just cut them out. So these are basically just full character sheets where I printed it and I set two per page, so I printed out like that. Or I think I did a landscape, so it printed it side by side like that, and they were tiny. So that way I can fit them inside of my thing. I don't need to use as much paper. I can just hand them their mini character sheet. And I just do it all random. So like a low, and I do them all level two because a lot of times new players, they will die very quickly if they're level one. Level ones are squishy. I give them at least level two and I just, I just let them have that little bit of fun, you know, so that they don't just immediately die. <laughs> that way I don't have to worry about it as much. I don't have to attack them with only rats. They can see monsters that they think are cool and interesting, you know? So, yeah, it's kind of fun. That way they can have a good time. Because it's all about having fun and not beating your players. And then I always keep a couple of just full adventures um, at, the, at the ready for myself. Like the Wolves of Welton and Horror at Havel's Cross. Those are a couple I keep on hand. Um, these are really nice adventures. I do love them. And these are just, like, these are second levels. Oh, this is a second through third level adventure, and this one's a second level adventure. It's all, these are both for 5e, of course, but they have, like, maps and things like that. Um, I'll see if I can find the information on them, and I'll include that in the description below again for you. Probably have it in my last video for this. But, yeah, that is everything I have for inside that. If there's ever a time where I'm going somewhere and I want to have access to more than what I've printed, and it's like, oh, I don't have time to print out more, then I already have everything printed. This I got at Forged Gaming, link in the description below. I am an affiliate. I love the book because it has all the card slots for everything. And I have more room too. I even have the big ones for bigger cards. But I printed out the entire SRD of monster cards. The entire SRD is here. It took a long time to organize this. To organize it, it took a long time. I did it all alphabetically by creature type and everything it took it it was a it was a process oh and also by CR rating I have I have a my own system but yeah so that's something I'll just kind of grab on the go sometimes if I'm heading out and I'm like okay I'm gonna be over here I might want monsters and I might want stuff like that that I didn't print out already what if I have to wing it a little bit and this is just good to bring and set underneath the table or set on the middle of the table for my players to reference if they want to uh, my spell book. So this is also from the SRD. The player's Handbook, of course, has more. The player's Handbook is better. All right, it's one of my player's information here. I was keeping it safe for them. Um, I like to tell them it's over here. So basically, this is, and she uses this the most. But I have it all organized um, by type and then by alphabet and level. No, sorry, it's all alphabet. 
sorry, to type an alphabet, and yes, it is by level. So all the level zeros, those are all alphabetically ordered for me. And they go all the way through uh, A to Z, and then it starts on level ones. That one starts over there, and then level twos, and so on, you know? <clears throat> and then epic spells are something I've printed out that for if my players ever get to a ridiculously ridiculous level, just something that you, is unimaginable. It's like, okay, you have level nine spells, have fun. These are things that I'll let you learn. <laughs> So it's like at that point, you're, it's just letting them have fun, you know? Then everything all the way up to level nine spells I have in here. And I spent a lot of time organizing that. This I bring and I just set it in the middle of the table. And I'm like, if you need to reference something, go for it, have at it. You have descriptions, you have information. Uh, I'll find where I got this because it's been a couple of years. And I'll post a link in the description below, of course. It was incredibly handy and I have used it a lot. So basically guys, that's my portable DM setup, what I would bring with me if I'm ever going to go anywhere, if I'm ever going to do anything. Oh, I almost forgot this one. This. That's silly of me. More player information, sorry. These are also handy, just printouts. Well, I'm going to set that over here. So basically, this is my book of one-shots. My one-shot book. So what this is, is I have them all tabbed out, and all my one-shot adventures I have in here. So it's just one at a time. And oh yeah, did I not put anything into? I didn't put anything into. I'll reorganize it later. Um, there's that the Hound of Cabell Manor. That's a good one. Overgrown Shrine. It's a nice, interesting one. This is the free one that was on Roll Twenty, the starter adventure. Um, Prep module, demonic well. Yeah, I got just some cool ones. This one's like a shipwrecked one. It's just nice little adventures it'll take between like two and six hours. So you can do it in like one long session or one short session. So that's just a nice thing where if I know we're going to be doing just a one-time game, I'll bring that book, you know? But I do have a couple one-session one things in my DM kit for if I need it. So it comes in incredibly handy. Anyways, guys, that's everything. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Check the description below for... Anything else, if you want to find things, there's links down there. Um, if you want to go buy dice, if you want to buy um, like Dice Envy stuff or Forge stuff, because they have dice towers, they got dice boxes, they got the book. Um, I'll give you links too. It's all affiliate, except for the DMs Guild stuff. I'm not an affiliate with them. That's just because I like them. So go support the creators. So I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.